Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is sky. S-K-Y. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... I wonder what ever happened to that red-headed girl. Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman has placed a try for it. Just before we went on the air, we asked if there were any young people present who'd like to get married someday. Now, our studio audience selected Miss Frankie Costaletto and policeman Bob Selman, and here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. Uh, Miss, uh, Castelletto? That's right. Frank, I'll call you Frankie, huh? Yes. Where, where are you from, Frankie? I was born somewhere on Brooklyn Avenue here in Los Angeles. <laughs> What do you mean you were born somewhere along Brooklyn Avenue? Well, we were going to the hospital. And I know that on my birth certificate, it just says Brooklyn Avenue. Do you root for the Dodgers? <laughs> uh, how old are you, Frankie? 25. You're a young-looking girl for 25. <laughs> and police, you're, you're a policeman? Yes, sir. Mr. Selman, Bob Selman. Yes, sir. Uh, how old are you? Uh... I'm 27, Groucho. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? I uh, was born on Lake Superior, in Duluth, Minnesota. You were born on Lake Superior? Yes, sir. I was born on the lake. What are you, a whitefish? <laughs> what do you mean you were born on Lake Superior? Well, I was born on Lake Superior. My folks were on a fishing trip, and, uh... Did your old man go on fishing while this was... <laughs> and, uh, what do you do for a living, uh... I'm a librarian. Uh -huh. What kind of a librarian are you? Public librarian. Now, what's the difference between a public library and a... <laughs> and a private library? Well, um... Oh, I have a library at home. <laughs> I don't have any books in it. But... Oh. Good place to hide booze. And... Well, when we think of a private library... Do you think very often of a private library? <laughs> well, private libraries are usually corporation libraries. They have sort of a restricted clientele, but we like to see everybody at the public library. I always think of a private library, you know. I always think of a kind of an elderly man in a smoking jacket sitting there with a knife in his back. And, uh... <laughs> usually around midnight. <laughs> they never read, those fellas. They're always sitting there with knives in their back. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not married, huh? No, I'm not married. Uh, Bob, why, why aren't you married? Not on my salary, Groucho. <laughs> Would you like to get married, Bob? Someday I plan to, yes, sir. And when? Well, as soon as I can afford it. You mean you're going to stay a bachelor all your life? <laughs> Have you, have you ever thought of including uh, Frankie here in your plans? Well, I just met her, Groucho. Well, you're a cop, aren't you? <laughs> Wait till she breaks the law and then pinch her. <laughs> and Miss Castelletto will tell you a thing or two. <laughs> you're still a policeman, aren't you, Bob? Yes, sir. What kind of a cop are you? I'm a probationary officer. You're on probation? <laughs> Why is that? Well, you're on your probation, Groucho, until you've proven yourself to your superior, uh, superior officers. Mm -hmm. You're under constant observation? Uh, yes, sir, I'm under constant observation. Mm -hmm. you, you mean you cracked? Uh... <laughs> no, sir, I uh, have to prove myself first. You have to watch yourself every minute, huh? Watch myself every minute. And while you're admiring yourself in the clothing store, <laughs> across the street, the crooks are robbing the bank, I suppose. <laughs> Miss Castelletto, what do you think of a man who's half-cracked under observation and goes around pinching people? I think he's cute. I may be wrong, Bob, but it seems to me that you're more than casually interested in Frankie here. You know. Why don't you ask her phone number? Go ahead. Don't be bashful. And... I already have it, Groucho. See, Frankie, the long arm of the law is slipping around your waist already. <laughs> Frankie, truly, does he really have your phone number? Yes, Groucho. 
<laughs> Why'd you give it to him, huh? I don't know. He asked me. I'm used to answering questions. <laughs> ah, the training these young policemen get nowadays. <laughs> Remember, she's a librarian there now, uh, Bob. I'll she can read you like a book. <laughs> Well, I've kidded our policeman tonight, but he, he knows I didn't mean a word of it. I'm sure we've become old and trusted friends, Bob. Yes, and eventually we'll spend a lot of time together. Huh? <laughs> now, in just one minute, the two of you will play your bet your life for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. Drive a DeSoto before you decide. All across the country, prospective car owners are doing just that. They're thrilling to the beauty and performance of this new DeSoto. For here is a car with not just a few new features, but one that is really a new model from bumper to bumper. Start at the front of this car and feast your eyes on DeSoto's brand new full-width front grille. A beautiful grille that gives the car a look of power its high-compression engine so justly deserves. Look at those newly styled rear fenders and see how they add sweep and grace to the entire appearance of the car. Look through that rear window, which is larger and also has been lowered to make the visibility far better. And then take this new DeSoto out on the road. Remember, it's the car that lets you drive without shifting. Note its bigger brakes that stop you with far less effort. Feel how easy it is to drive and to steer. Yes, drive a DeSoto before you decide. Tomorrow, see the new, the all-new DeSoto at your authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now let's see if a policeman and a librarian will get the chance at the $1,500. Phantom, and bring them up to date on the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. You're nothing on me, Phantom, and I don't know what's going on out here either. <laughs> here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected stars and current movies as your category. Is that right? Here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to try? Ten. Who plays opposite Rhonda Fleming in The Great Lover? Bob Hope. Bob Hope is correct. And they're off to a good start with $30. Now you got $30. How much are you going to try? Ten. Twenty. Remember, you're going for fifteen hundred dollars tonight. <laughs> Who is the star of Twelve O'clock High? Gregory Peck. Gregory Peck is right. <laughs> They're on their way now. They have fifty dollars. Here's your third question. You got fifty. How much are you going to try the fifty? Thirty dollars. Who plays opposite George Brent and Robert Young in Bride for Sale? Uh, Claudette Colbert. Claudette Colbert is right. <laughs> They're really on their way now. They have eighty dollars, Groucho. How much of the eighty will you try? Twenty enough? No way up. Eighty. All of it? Okay. Who co-stars with Wanda Hendricks and Orson Welles and Prince of Foxes? Jerome Power. Jerome Power. Yeah. And they wind up with one hundred and sixty dollars. <laughs> Thanks, and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Stick around now. You still might get the chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still sky. Perhaps our next couple will say it. Well, who is next? A television expert and a housewife, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they come. Mrs. Olive Rusuk and Mr. Clifford Wong meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, folks, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Oliver Rusuk, is that right? Rusick. Uh, Rusick. Uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Rock Island, Illinois. And, and you, uh, Mr. Wong, you're, you're in television? That's right. It isn't often we have people from show business here. <laughs> <laughs> what shows are you on, uh, Mr. Wong? I'm not on any show. <laughs> oh, uh, out of work, eh? <laughs> what was your last television job? Well, I uh, repaired a console set today, this afternoon. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You fix television sets? That's right. Well, what makes television work? Well, the... Uh, <laughs> both the... Uh, well, sync pulses and the blanking pulses were transmitted by the transmitting station. It's transmitted on the horizontal polarized plane. Mm -hmm. It's received by the receiver. <laughs> and it's detected at the... Well, I think the secret of television is pretty safe with you, huh? <laughs> Uh, 
Mrs. Russick, let's forget the whole thing. What, what does your husband do, Mrs. Russick? He's an ex-musician. An ex-musician? Uh-huh. We've got 15 of them back there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good place for him to join, wouldn't it? What do you mean he's an ex-musician? Does he make a living not playing an instrument? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what does he do now? He's working for the school board now. Does he play a uh, xylophone or anything? Oh, no. Uh-uh. Once in a while... What did, he, what did he play before? Well, he played a banjo. Yeah. And Once did he woo someone... you with a banjo? Uh-huh. How? Uh-huh. Well, and that, and that isn't how I met him. My father lived on a farm, and I was visiting him, and uh, I wanted to learn how to drive the car, but he didn't want to teach me, so he was taking a nap, and, then, and that afternoon, well, he was going to have this young lad come and help him with the haying. And this when... is the Eddie Peabody character. Yes. Right? <laughs> so when he came and my father was asleep, he decided he might as well take a nap, too, so he crawled up on the haystack. And so I was out driving the car around in the hayfield, because that way I wouldn't hit, hit anybody or anything, and so uh-huh. I run it into the haystack. And I bounced him out, and he landed on the hood of the car in, in front of the windshield. And that's how I met him. <laughs> Did he have his banjo with him at the time? No, he didn't. Now, uh, Clifford Wong, I'll just call you Static, huh? <laughs> Tommy, as a television repairman, just what do you do? Repair television sets. <laughs> Who do you work for, Mr. Wong? Munch Television. Well, if you had to do it over again, would you go into the television business, uh, Mr. Well, uh, yes, I think I will, but only on your side of the business is where there's money involved. You want to be where I am, where the money is, is that it? <laughs> All right, you ask for it. Go ahead. This is your program, huh? <laughs> You're the comedian. I'm the contestant. Go ahead. Interview me. <laughs> you think this is such a soft racket? You try it, bro. All right. Uh, what's your name? Put in tame. Ask me again, and I'll tell you the same. Well, what do you do for How do you a like it? Go ahead. Ask me another question. What do you usually do for a living? I'm in television. You're I fix in... television sets. <laughs> now, since you're me, go ahead. Tell a joke. Huh? Well, I tell you, uh, something funny happened to me on the uh, way to the studio tonight. <laughs> Well, there's going to be a lot of radios going to need fixing after this. <laughs> well, I'll Go t- ahead, shoot, Mr. Wong. Well, on my way to the studio tonight, a man stopped me. Uh-huh. He says, uh, could you let me have 30 cents so I could boot my family? Feeling sorry for the man, I handed him 30 cents. I said, uh, where is your family? This is the answer he gave me, in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> How old a man was he, do you remember? No, I don't. What, what was the movie, do you remember that? Didn't tell me. Now, you were going to tell us a joke. Go ahead with the joke. Huh? That is the joke. That's the joke? Okay, have it your own way. Huh? What do you do for a living? I repair television sets. Well, stick to it. That's where the big money is. Huh? Well, after talking to you two, I'm convinced television is still around the corner. <laughs> now, let's see if you can run your $20 into more than the other two couples and get a crack at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question later. I can't tell you how much they won, but George Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The policeman and the librarian won $160. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. What question category did you select? A. Music, Music. by Music. Jimmy McHugh. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And how much are you going to risk? Shall we bet ten? Talk right ten. up into ten. the microphone now. Ten. Because Bing ten Crosby dollars. is listening, and oh. we don't want uh, old Baldy to miss anything here. Right? <laughs> You're going to bet ten dollars. Here's yes. your first question. Jerry Fielding plays. You give me the name of the song. Play, Jerry. Sunny side of the street. On the sunny side of the street. Thirty dollars. Okay, now you got $30. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? 20 How much? $20. What is the name of this song? What is the answer you two have decided upon, huh? Take a stab Something about the sky, isn't it? Hey! Take a word! 
Riding around that haystack suddenly made you lucky, Mr. Darcy. <laughs> you just said sky, and that's the secret word tonight, so you win $100 in cash, compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. By the way, the name of that song is I Feel a Song Coming On. Uh, they have uh, practically nothing outside of that hundred dollars. Ten dollars, right? Groucho. You're now, you're now, you've sunk down to ten dollars. And here's your third question: How much of the ten are you going to bet? I will bet five dollars. Five dollars. Give me the title of this McHugh song, okay, Jerry? Don't, don't play me. Don't, don't play me. me. Don't play me. Oh, I have fifteen dollars, Groucho. Now you're riding down the roller coaster. You got fifteen smackers. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much will you bet? Let's bet it all. Here we go. What's the name of this song? I can't give you anything but love, baby. Stop. And they wind up with $30. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. All right, let's have our third couple, George. And it won't be long before we know who gets the big question. Who's ahead so far, Fenneman? The librarian and the policeman with $160. And the secret word is still sky. We invited some auctioneers and some square dance callers to the show tonight, and here comes the couple selected just before we went on the air. Auctioneer Ken Porter and square dance caller Irene Hanford meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life, folks, and if one of you says the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you see every day. We have an auctioneer and a square dance caller, eh? <laughs> Miss uh, uh, Irene Hanford? That's right. You're a square dance caller, is that right? Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. Isn't that a kind of a peculiar occupation for a woman? Well, it might be, but I think women can do anything men can. You really think so, huh? I'd like to see you get into the steam room at the Yelts Club. <laughs> Where are you from, Irene? Los Angeles. And uh, are you married? No, I'm not. I'm a miss. You're, you're a miss, huh? Well, a miss is as good as a mile. <laughs> I always say. No, I don't always say that. <laughs> I, in fact, I never say that. I, I haven't said that in years. <laughs> you're, you're the auctioneer, Mr. Porter? Uh, where, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Champaign, Illinois. How long have you been in California, Mr. Porter? Well, I settled here in about 1945. What'd you settle for, 90 cents on the dollar? <laughs> As an auctioneer, 90 cents on the dollar, I suppose. <laughs> Are you married, or haven't you ever felt yourself going, going, gone? Huh? Yes, I'm married. You are, you are married, huh? How'd you meet your wife? Did you oh, pick well. her up at an auction? Huh? <laughs> uh, when I got my discharge out of Klamath Falls, Oregon, I came down here to visit... Out of where? Klamath Falls, Oregon. What were you doing up there? <laughs> I was in rehabilitation camp up there. Oh. What, what do you do as, in a rehabilitation camp? Well, I was a Marine Corps. They was getting me ready for the public, I guess. <laughs> What would you say is the most important qualification for an auctioneer? Well, 95% of it is psychology, softening up to people. Well, is that what you use the hammer for? And... <laughs> no. No, I mean, you've got to, oh, tell jokes. <laughs> I'm still trying to recover from the last joke I had. Okay, let's hear one of the jokes, then. <laughs> Just a small one now. Say about a $2 purchase, huh? Go I ahead. don't mean uh, that. I mean, you got to soften the crowd up, not with a joke, but uh, sort of in a saying, like if they're not bidding, I'll just tell them if they're dead, why don't they lay down? Or... <laughs> That's a nice joke, I think, to tell them. <laughs> or that they have, would... have any of them ever taken you up in that offer? <laughs> How does an auction work, uh, Mr. Porter? Well, uh, you bring up an article and you explain it. For instance, if you're selling a cow, a piece of furniture, a diamond ring, or anything like that, you explain it. And tell you have to it explain takes... a cow to the audience? <laughs> How do you explain a cow? I'd like to hear well, it. <laughs> How many bids are needed to sell an item, man? Two bids, sir. Oh. One bid doesn't make an auction. Well, how do you know when to stop the bidding? Well, when they quit bidding. This is after you tell them to lie down the floor and drop dead? Is that... <laughs> where, do you, where do you do your uh, hawking or auctioneering? <laughs> well, I auction at Auction City. and There is really a city called Auction City? Yes, sir. It's the biggest one in the world. Well, I, you know, I'm kind of curious to hear you give your pitch. Suppose I got a $1,000 diamond ring here and I want you to sell it for me. Now, you go ahead and sell it. 
All right, now, here's a very gorgeous diamond ring, ladies and gentlemen. What are you going to give Hardy it? All right, down to any money bid now, $30 now, $30 bid now, five, five now, $30 right bid now, $40 board. Now, ladies and gentlemen... You forgot to say very... drop dead, huh? <laughs> I notice you raise your hand when you're doing that chanting. Why do you do that? Do you want to ask a question? No. <laughs> I help you pick up bids. Oh, I thought maybe you, then you want to go to the bedroom, huh? <laughs> Well, uh, Irene, I'm nuts about type secretary. Uh, I've never gone square dancing. Could you describe a typical dance? Uh, well, you want an easy one or a complicated one? Well, say about medium, huh? <laughs> Tell us, Irene, huh? Well, how about... Throw your inhibitions out the window. <laughs> well, the uh, first and third couples lead out to the right in circle four. And they go once around, and the working gents go home. <laughs> Did you say the working gents go home? <laughs> yeah. Well, then who do they dance with? <laughs> You've well, only started, and the men leave already? <laughs> and the, uh, the girls, their partners, are left on the side with the other two gents in, a, in two lines of three. Well, there's two gents that didn't go home, huh? <laughs> they don't like it at home, huh? Well, tell me, Gally Kirchie, let's... Uh, could, you, could you call a square dance? Uh... Well, I might give you just one... The way one might start. Okay. You always start out with an alum and left and a grand right and left, you know. So you yeah. might start out, well, swing your honey high and low when you keep on swinging that calico. Now it's alum and left with the old left hand. Right to your honey, go right and left grand. Hand over hand all around that ring and a hand over hand with the dear little thing and you beat your honey and pound it <laughs> That's pretty good. I kind of like that, huh? <laughs> now, suppose you want to set up an auction across the street from a square dance. <laughs> and you wanted to take that crowd away from it. Now, uh, how about you uh, starting your auction and you do your square dance? And let's see how the two... <laughs> now, one, two, three, go! All right, now, 75 in now, $80 hard, $80 bid now. All right, now, 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 $80 bid now. Anybody wants to make a phone call, this is the time to do it. Right? <laughs> well, I've learned a lot about America tonight, and uh, it won't be long before we're investigated. Right? <laughs> now, you're going to play the DeSoto Plymouth game. You bet your life. If you beat the other couples, you'll get a crack at the $1,500 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The policeman and the librarian are still ahead with $160. Here we go. You have $20. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected famous animals as your category. Okay, how much of the 20 are you going to try and talk right into the microphone and loud? Ten dollars. What animal do you associate with Lady Godiva? Horse. A horse, horse is correct. <laughs> They're on their way with $30. I'd rather associate with Lady Godiva than the horse. <laughs> okay, now you got $30. Remember, you're going for 1500 a night. How much of the 30 will you try? Make it 20. Oh, 25 is better. 25? Okay, 25. <laughs> what kind of animals do you associate with the Pied Piper? Mice. Uh, rats. <laughs> they're climbing. They have fifty-five dollars. Well, Gacho. They're, bo they're both rodents, so I guess we give you. <laughs> How much are you going to bet? You have fifty-five dollars. Forty-five. Forty-five dollars. What animal do you associate with Jonah? A whale. A whale is right. <laughs> they're really climbing. They have one hundred dollars. Well, that was a whale of finance, and now uh, you have a hundred dollars, <laughs> and here's your last chance to beat the other couple. How much uh, of the oh, hundred will you bet? Oh. You're going to shoot the works? What animal do you associate with Romulus and Remus? Wolf. A wolf is right. And they wind up with $200. And that means the auctioneer and the square dance caller get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. <laughs> If you're thinking of buying a new car, remember this. Now, more than ever, the beautiful new Plymouth is the car that likes to be compared. Because the new Plymouth is the low-priced car, most like high-priced cars. It's packed with value and ready to prove it now at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. 
Check the value in this great new car yourself, feature by feature, against that of any other leading low-priced car. Compare the convenience of the new Plymouth's ignition key starting, the soaring power of its high-compression engine, the velvety comfort of its improved air pillow ride, the quick, sure stops of its safeguard hydraulic brakes, and many other features exclusive with the great new Plymouth. You'll discover that this beautiful new Plymouth offers you a truly sensational new high for value in the low-priced field. Tomorrow, see the American beauty, the great new Plymouth at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And while you're there, don't miss the brilliant new DeSoto as well, a car that's truly new, the finest car that has ever borne the name DeSoto. Learn why your DeSoto Plymouth dealer is so proud of these two superb cars, the great new Plymouth and the brilliant new DeSoto. And here is the auctioneer and the square dance caller, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. How, how, how about it, kids? You nervous? Slightly. This is, this is the, you're both professional talkers now. This is the time to talk up. All right, here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully and please. No help from the audience. Here it is. Abraham Lincoln was our tallest president, standing six feet four in his stocking feet. For $1,500, tell me, who was our shortest president? What's the answer you two have decided upon? Ulysses Grant? No, I I'm sorry. It was James Madison, who was five feet four. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $200 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life, presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week the big question will be worth $2,000. Well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, here's a reminder. A dime seems like a lot of money to a small child, especially when that dime is part of the money you give the March of Dimes. And that child is a victim of infantile paralysis. Send all the dimes and dollars you can spare to your local March of Dimes headquarters. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Coast to coast.